I hope you're all doing well, whether or not uh, it's morning um, in Europe or evening uh, in Australia. I hope you are doing well and hope you are studying well as well also. Um, so today uh, we're going to spend uh, an hour doing uh, physics problems from ACER's blue booklet. So the best way, uh, you know, is for you to, you know, try to, uh, you know, get an understanding of the questions and try to solve the problem. And, uh, and then, you know, uh, we discuss the, uh, the solution <clears throat> and uh, the main ideas that you should have. So we're going to try to do all the uh, physics problems in the uh, booklet, but um, it's possible that, uh, you know, we might not get through one of the units. We'll see. Okay, so it all depends on uh, how many questions we have and, and how we move forward. Okay, so let's begin. I hope you've looked at uh, Unit 2, uh, you looked at the question, and, um, and now uh, you look at question uh, number 7. Uh, no, I, I do not have uh, Parkinson's disease, but I cannot. <laughs> I, I absolutely cannot draw. So uh, that's uh, my best rendition of what you see on, in your booklet, uh, which hopefully uh, you have in front of you. So, um, you know, they say the ball starts up here and it starts at rest and then it drops and it comes down to uh, this level. How do you calculate the total mechanical energy when something drops from one point to another? And it doesn't matter if it's a ball that is rolling down here. It doesn't matter if uh, we're talking about uh, if you're holding a brick in your hand and you drop the brick. It doesn't matter. It all comes down to the same thing, which is uh, what Brock just wrote there, that the total energy which is the total mechanical energy is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. And, and, and that's the key point, that the total energy, which we often write as E uh, subscript T, or total, is equal to the uh, uh, kinetic energy plus the um, potential energy. And just for interest's sake, um, uh, how would you uh, calculate, oh, well, it's already been written. So the, the kinetic energy is um, uh, one-half mv squared, okay? So that's one-half mass times velocity squared. And the potential energy is uh, mgh, which is mass uh, times gravity times height. So uh, those are the, these are the basic ideas that they expect you to know, okay? And uh, there's not a lot of times that you're going to get a mark just because you memorized an equation. But uh, here's a situation. The total mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic and potential energy. And the, 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 the theory here is that we have conservation of energy, which means the total potential energy, because this is at a height, you know it's going to drop and give off kinetic energy, the energy of movement is kinetic, potential uh, energy in this case is based on how high it is. And that's why potential energy is mgh, mass times gravity times height. Mass times gravity, of course, is equal to weight. So it's weight times height. Mass times gravity is weight and uh, height. So, so the, the, the more it weighs and the higher it is, is the more potential energy it has. So once you let it go, uh, it has a more uh, potential to be converted into kinetic energy, of course. So that's uh, total mechanical energy is, is constant. So the uh, question number seven, uh, the answer is C, uh, which is, remains constant. So uh, question number eight, um, it talks about the decrease in gravitational potential energy, of course, because when you add a certain height here, as the ball goes down, the height is less and less. It is less and less high off of the bottom surface. And so therefore, mgh goes down, so the gravitational potential energy is decreasing. So as it slides from point R, uh, where it is here at the top, to point S, uh, the question is um, uh, the decrease in gravitational potential energy is going to be equal to what? So here again, you, you need to know the equation. 
um, and and the equate the relevant equation which we've already said and which was already written is that uh, the potential energy is equal to m uh, g h which is mass times gravity times height now it's very important uh, that you know there's there's two issues here one is that uh, you have to be very uh, comfortable with uh, dimensional analysis uh, for physics and general chemistry. And dimensional analysis means that you're very careful with the units. You're always paying attention to units. Because on the real GAMSAT test, uh, you will be able to score a few marks, you know, somewhere between one and six or seven marks uh, in the um, section three, just based on the fact that you're paying attention to the units. And if you don't pay attention to the units, then you can lose some easy marks. So, uh, you know, when we're talking about SI units, which is the Système International uh, set of units, which is the set of units that you are expected to know uh, for the GAMSAT, then mass is in what units for the SI system? Mm, close to grams, <laughs> right, kilograms. So uh, mass is in kilograms in the SI system units, and this is very important for you to know because there's going to be some questions you will absolutely get incorrect if, if uh, you're not comfortable with that. So um, in, the, in the passage, they give us 50 grams, and therefore uh, we convert 50 grams to kilograms, and that would be 0.05. Oops. <laughs> Um, 0.05. Okay, so uh, so we have 0.05 uh, kilograms, and then uh, what, then we're going to have to look at gravity, and what in the SI system is the unit for um, for length? What what's the unit for length in the SI system? Right, so it's meters. So because it's meters, therefore we can use the estimate that we're given in the problem, which is 10 meters per second squared. Because had the SI units been based on uh, 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 kilometers or something else, then we would have to convert that into kilometers per second squared or whatever. And we also know that seconds are one of the units uh, the, for time, is the unit for time in SI system. Uh, are we always based on SI? You, you're expected to know SI system and, and you're expected to, to have that as your default, the SI system. But no, it, they might not always be SI system because they might give you other units, of course, expecting that you know how to convert to the SI system. That's all. But they're not going to give you a uh, British system or, uh, you know, something like, you know, pounds or whatever without giving you the conversion factors. They would absolutely have to give you the conversion factors. Okay, so, uh, and then the last part is the height. So what's the height? What is the height that this dropped, this uh, ball dropped? Because, of course, the, the answer depends on this completely. Did the ball did the ball really drop uh, ten centimeters? Look at it at its top point and look at it at its bottom point. Right. So you see, it's not ten centimeters that it dropped. At least let's uh, let's we note that. So we we see that it dropped from from here down to here. We, we assume gravity is 10 meters per second squared because it says so in the problem. You don't have to memorize that. Okay, so here's uh, where the ball dropped. Now, now look carefully the way I'm measuring this. I'm measuring it from the center of mass of the ball. I'm following its center from here down to here. <laughs> not perfect, but whatever. So I'm only looking at the center, exactly. So now you're evolving your answer. Um, so that's going to be seven centimeters. And the reason is because if you, if, you look, if you look down here, from this part 
of the slide slot to here is 10 centimeters. So now let's look up here. From here to here is going to be 10 centimeters, right? Because it makes a square. And we're told from here to here it's 6 centimeters. From here to here it's 2 centimeters. So that means from this point to this point must be 2 centimeters. And because the ball is 2 centimeters in diameter, it means the ball is 1 centimeter would be the radius. So we have 1 centimeter radius, and then we have the 6 centimeters here. So that's 7 centimeters. So you don't even have to calculate, OK, uh, why measure to, to the end of the, um, you don't have to measure from the center of the ball if the ball is uniform. You don't have to measure from the center of the ball, but you have to measure from the same point in the ball from top to bottom. So the center of the ball is the center of the mass, yes. And, and you would have to do that if it was not uniform. But if it's uniform, it's, you know, you can measure from the bottom of the ball to the bottom of the ball. That's acceptable. You can measure from the top of the ball to the top of the ball. But you just can't measure from any point in the ball and then measure from a different point in the ball because that's not giving you the distance that it actually fell. You're, you're, you're including a distance that has nothing to do with how far it actually fell. So the point is that you have to measure from the identical point to the identical point, and therefore, then you have the, the true distance that it fell. And uh, finally, uh, you don't have to even calculate anything else because you know that we have seven centimeters. We've already told, we've already said that uh, uh, centimeters has to be converted to meters, which would end up being 0 0.07. But you don't even have to calculate that because you have 7 times 5. 7 times 5 is 35. And on the exam, you're not going to waste your time calculating something you don't have to calculate. You have 7 times, you're sure about the 5, <laughs> you're sure about the 7, and you're sure about the 10. So now you have 7 times 5. It's 35. There's only one answer. You move on to the next question. Because for the GAMSAT, you don't have time to waste. So you're not going to, you know, Make sure you have 10 to the minus 2, and it's not 10 to the minus 4 or 3. You're not going to waste that time. So, um, but of course, you'll end up having 5, because 10 times 0.05 is 0.5. And then you'll have 0.5 times uh, 0.07. And uh, that will give you 3.5 times 10 to the minus 2. The difficulty of the real GAMSAT uh, is it similar to this. So uh, we did a poll of over 100 students who uh, did very well in the GAMSAT, had an average GAMSAT score in the mid-60s. So th they did quite well for Section 3. And these, these two-thirds of these students felt that uh, the ACER booklets in general were a fair representation of the real exam. Okay, So that's two-thirds. You're going to also hear in the forums, whatever, about the one-third of students. <laughs> and the one-third of students think that uh, um, the real exam is more difficult. But honestly, my opinion is that the real exam is quite similar to the ACER booklets, you know, after, you know, discussing this at length. Uh, the problem is, of course, is that most students do these booklets a little bit at a time. And the problem when you do a little bit at a time gives you a completely different impression than sitting through an exam, which is you're there for seven and a half hours, and some students are there for eight or nine hours, depending on uh, where you are and so on. And the intensity of the exam um, and, and doing the full day exam, it's quite different. So uh, yes, yeah, some students will say that the purple booklet is the most similar out of the four materials. But these, these are still very reasonable uh, to, to do it. OK, so, um, so answers. Please, A, B, C, D. So I had one person said A. OK. So now I'm just going to try to get you to, um, <clears throat> we're definitely, OK, just, uh, I just want to answer this question about why are we using the vertical distance or horizontal distance. It's because this is a square. And because, because this 
is a square and it's 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. So if we measure um, from this point to the ball, because this distance is exactly two centimeters, this distance also must be exactly two centimeters. The ball is also two centimeters. So we're also left with six, six centimeters here. It's just the symmetry of the problem permits us uh, to solve it uh, this way. OK, so um, question number nine. The key point here is that the ball is falling, OK? Now, when the ball is falling in a normal situation, this container, this slide slot, they're calling it, so you learn a new word, is, is stuck to the table. So when the ball is falling, we're only talking about the energy of the ball as it goes from up here to down here. But in the third problem, they changed the issue. And so here, they're changing it to something that you cannot memorize. You have to reason it, uh, the, the understanding. And, and, and here, they're telling, tell, saying that as this ball is going down, it is not attached. And therefore, as the ball goes down, it's going to push this slide slot. What direction will it push the slide slot? Will it move left or right? As the ball goes down, use your intuition. Will it move left or right? Yeah, the slide slot will move left because the ball's moving right. It's action uh, reaction. So it's it's moving to this side. So that means it must be pushing the slide slot to the left. So now we have to try to have a new way of reasoning. We're saying that total energy is constant. Before we said the total energy is equal to the kinetic and the potential energy, but now we have something new that's that's happening. As the ball is falling down, there's a new component. It has energy to push. So this is something new that didn't happen before. So we have, we, we do have always that the total energy is constant, but that total energy is going into the mechanical energy, which is the ball going down, and it's going into a push pushing this slide slot. So that energy is going into doing something. It's going into doing work, of course. So we have three things that are going on. But this push, what's happening to it as it's going down? Is it pushing more and more, or is it pushing less and less? What do you think? as the ball is going down. Yes, it's going, it's going to push more. And if you were not clear about that, if you didn't have an, a feeling or a, an intuition of that, just think of it this way. The ball is starting at rest. So if it's starting at rest, clearly when it's starting, it's not pushing the slide slot to the left at all. The second you release it, it starts increasing speed, and now it starts pushing on the slide slot to the left. And the more speed it has is the more strength it has to push it to the left. So it's going to start pushing zero, and then it's going to start pushing more and more. So then what happens to the mechanic? If this is constant, what happens to the mechanical energy if the push is going to be more and more and more? What happens to the mechanical energy? It must decrease. As the ball goes down, it must, the mechanical energy must decrease in order, in order for the total energy of the system to remain constant. And, and that is uh, the conservation of energy. OK, so uh, that is answer A for question 9. We're moving on to the next question, uh, the next question for physics.